He's the larger-than-life character with a passion for women and sport. The man with the Cheshire Cat grin who can say it all with the raising of an eyebrow. Jack Nicholson has given us some of the most memorable characters in cinematic history and delivered some of the greatest one-liners of all time. From an early age, Jack knew what he wanted to do and he knew where he needed to be. He got a job as a messenger boy for MGM and he learnt from the best. I wanted to see movie stars and uh, watch how they made movies. And I did for two and a half years, you know. Me and Tom and Jerry and Bill Han and Joe Barbera. You know, I mean, I saw Marilyn and Bogey and Betty and Lauren and Kay and Fred and Ginger and Gene and everybody, everybody I ever wanted to see, you know. And there I was, right with them. What a life. <laughs> a life that's seen Jack Nicholson's name etched into Hollywood's history books with three Oscar wins. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. After roles in movies like The Crybaby Killer and The Little Shop of Horrors, Nicholson became frustrated with the direction his acting was taking and decided to turn his hand to writing, penning the screenplay The Trip, which starred Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper. This led to Jack's big break in Easy Rider. Jack is the first to acknowledge that the life of an actor is full of ups and downs. Peaks and valleys, you know, I, I'll put a real tanker out there next. <laughs> Many of Jack's creations have become part of pop culture. One of his most memorable performances was as a man teetering on the brink of insanity in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. I loved his films, from Carnal Knowledge to The Shining to... The Shining's like my favourite movie. <clears throat> and you watch his work and you go, oh, how complex. And then you work with him and you see how it's really a one, two, three, four thing with him. He goes, this, that, this, that, and you don't know I mean, like, for, across the room, you just see him. You could see him going through each transition. But on screen, when you watch the character, everything's just so seamless with it. Pretty amazing how he brings that across. That performance has become so iconic that it's now become a yardstick against which other performances are measured. When Ryan Reynolds' character took a disturbing turn in the Amityville horror, many made the comparison to Jack. And that's something I, in fact, I most intentionally stayed away from in the making of this movie. So it's something I really, you know, I, I don't know. Jack Nicholson really reveled in his rage, and, and my character, I feel like, is hating it. You know, he's somebody who's really conflicted. And well, you know, I don't know if Jack could get away with doing Jack now. I mean, that was that was a pretty bold move back then. So um, I certainly loved it, and I, I would never want to tread upon that hallowed ground. More comparisons were made when Heath Ledger took on the role made famous by Nicholson, that of the Joker. Evil with a sadistic sense of humour, Jack described his Joker as a psychotic version of Bugs Bunny. Jack is a very intuitive actor and he, you know, he gets into character and he gets into character well before you start shooting. And, uh, you know, so that by the time he walks onto the set, he feels very clear and strong about the character. So when you're shooting, it's great because that's when you toy around with the levels of, of how broad to go. And I mean, there was always a question, how, how much do you laugh? You know, I mean, are people gonna go nuts hearing this laugh all the time? So, you know, we tried it always a couple of different ways, just to, and you know, since he's so strong with the character, you can play a bit. So it was quite fun. Uh, and playing around is another thing he's good at. He has a legendary status as one of Hollywood's biggest playboys, and he doesn't back away from it. I am about a lot of fun. <laughs> I've never been any different. You know, I mean, I like a good time too much, you know I mean? I've been in, in, reined in and scolded at almost every juncture of my life, but nobody hates me for it. I'm easy to rein in, but I do. I'm, I'm a little bit you know, overcharged by fun, so to speak. I, I look for it like gold. But there's a serious side to all this. He won an Oscar for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Terms of Endearment, and most recently for As Good As It Gets, which he didn't take lightly. I dropped about three quarts of water the minute they said my name, and up until then, I was numb. As a boy, Jack was attracted to Hollywood by his love of films. But as we've come to learn, Jack Nicholson doesn't mind the finer things in life either. I've always felt that one of the most valuable commodities the movies provide is glamour, you know, a feeling of something that's not just down and down all the time and all kinds of complaining and pissing and moaning and just like 
greatness, you know, glamour. That's what I like. All comparisons are odious, as my mother told me. Uh, I, I always have a good time working. I, I suppose those of you who know anything about me know I've always worked with good directors. I'm real good. I choose material well, and after that, I think uh, I'm lucky. I don't know whether it's just luck on Jack's side. When it comes to working, he is professionalism personified. In preparation for his role as a cancer patient in the bucket list, not only did he shave his head, but he also visited terminally ill patients in hospital to better learn how they cope with their illness. He's so prepared. Because you never know when you're working with somebody who's very well known or somebody whose work you might have admired over the years, what they're going to be like. And he was always incredibly professional, on time, um, knew his lines, was I mean, more than that. I mean, he just was plugged into the character and, and, and just a hardworking actor, just like everybody else. And I was so gratified to find that was true, that, that he really, he does his work well. He deserves, you know, all of the wonderful things that have come his way. He's this force of nature that just comes on to set and you have to sort of roll with the punches. And he's very unpredictable when he's on camera. And then that camera starts rolling, you, you know anything can happen. And it's really exciting as a young actor to be able to uh, play against that, you know. I mean, there were moments in this film where I, I didn't know what was going to happen next. I didn't know what he had under the table. I didn't know what he was going to bring out. <laughs> I didn't know what side of Costello he was going to be playing on any particular day. And it gave me, so, fed me so much as an actor because it gave me a huge range of emotions. You can do exactly what you want and he'll go, oh, okay, 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 okay. You know, and you just see that mind, and then it's, there it is. He can tune himself like um, an exquisite instrument. He can, he can work his face for the camera in a way like nobody. What he brings to any kind of film, I mean, he, he lights up a screen when he walks on, because he does weird things, you know does mad things and that's it's it, you, you've really got to be on your toes you know when you're opposite Jack. At the core of Jack Nicholson is a child busting to get out. Eternally youthful he has a thirst for knowledge and fun. I think Jack's fascinated by life I mean I don't know whether how much we have in common I don't want to you know but he's at the core of him there's um, a, 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 a kind of jazz philosopher I think you know because he has takes on things and he's and he's you know he's extremely well read he's he's got a real you know this is, it's it's a very quiet part of the guy that he just he's read a lot and he's seen a lot and he knows a lot and he's got real great taste and he's like you know and he's you know but if you talk to him about basketball where he's really expert and sophisticated and has a real great sophisticated fans point of view you can also, it's true, I can't, you know, I, I can't have the conversation with him about paintings, but if I was sophisticated about that, he'd be amazing in that regard. He's that way about life. He's that way, you know, big time about men and women, you know, big time about men and women. And the one thing I can say about him who, where, um, is that the way he talks to me about women is the way he'll talk to women about women. There's no different agenda. Women have certainly been one of Jack's passions. The other, his beloved LA Lakers basketball team. He's seen regularly courtside and has been a season ticket holder since 1970. Aside from that, he avoids the media spotlight. He doesn't give interviews and he hasn't appeared on a talk show since 1971. Not good for the actor. <laughs> A recipient of the American Film Institute Life Achievement Award, Jack Nicholson can cast a look as sharp as his wit and deliver a line like no other. And after 50 years in the biz, he's still giving us some of his best work. For more of your favourite stars, stay tuned to Star Picks. It's where you'll find the movies you know and the actors you love. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.